Okay, I, I want I want to turn to the discussion of, in a sense, the situation of labor in, as Marx puts it, contemporary economic life. It's laid out in the Paris Notebooks of 1844. Um, and this uh, discussion operates um, in terms of really three categories. One is objectification, and the other two that enter in within the specific situation of modern economic life are alienation and self-estrangement. And here we have Marx, in a sense, giving us a somewhat more detailed account of what he takes to be the general predicament of individuals in modern economic life, in what he will call bourgeois society. Now he begins by sketching out on page 71 what he says are the the central fact of contemporary economic life. Namely, the more wealth the worker produces, the more his production grows in power and scope, the poorer he becomes. The poorer he becomes. The more commodities he creates, the cheaper a commodity he becomes. The more the world of things increases in value, the more in direct proportion the world of men loses value. Now, you want to ask yourself, what what would have to be true for any of this to be a fact of contemporary society? Uh, in what sense would the worker become poorer with the expansion of uh, the wealth he produces? Well, what's one basic feature that would be a part of any part of supporting any such claim? What would have to be true about the wealth he produces? If in producing it, the more wealth he produces, the poorer it becomes. Yeah. Well, supply and demand, scarcity of resources, it's less valuable the more you have of it. Well, but here, um, it, even if one were to say that with increasing productivity, it's possible possible that the price of commodities, if they're offered for the market, of course, you have to take for granted that we're talking about the production of commodities here, that is, things that are not going to be consumed by the producer. But are, or, or transferred in ways that have nothing to do with market interaction, but they're going to be sold, uh, that uh, if there's increasing uh, supply and, well, demand remains the same or increases, of course, one could say maybe demand will change, but if you make certain assumptions, then one might say all things being equal, perhaps that might indicate that the price of each individual item might decline. But that doesn't mean that the aggregate value will decline. But in any event, what is the basic assumption which would allow one to even possibly entertain the notion that the, uh, that the producer will become poorer the greater the wealth the producer produces? He doesn't own it. I guess well, yeah. he doesn't own what he produces. Yeah, that what he's producing is, first of all, not his. It's not something that belongs to the producer. That's one thing. One, one presumption, obviously. Uh, that we're in a situation where when we're talking about uh, the producing of commodities, the producer does not own the product. It belongs to someone else. So in that regard, it's the wealth of someone else that might be said to be increasing, um, in relation to which the comparative wealth of the producer would be diminishing. Now, of course, you might ask, in what respect would the comparative wealth of the producer be diminishing? It depends upon what kind of livelihood the producer receives and on what basis. Now, one might ask, well, uh, how are we to think about this? One way of thinking about this involving a increasing cheapening or increasing poverty on the part of the, the producer would be if somehow or other what the producer receives itself declines in value in absolute terms, not just in proportion to the amount of value of, of the product, but also in absolute terms. And you might ask, well, how might that, how, how would there be any connection for that to occur? Um, well, let's say we're thinking about a situation where those who are producers are, are, are wage earners. They're paid a wage. Right? Inflation. The greater their uh, production, well, you know, inflation does not automatically mean that uh, 
they're getting less because they could be paid more. Right. You know, they, they, they might have to be paid more simply. But, you know, when we're talking about uh, increasing more wealth, that doesn't mean that the prices of particular items go up. It could, in fact, mean the reverse with the increasing productivity of the laborer. Uh, the cost of production per item may be less if we factor in uh, the role in the cost of production played by labor, the cost of labor, if one wants to think of those terms. Well, in that case, it might appear that if the price of production of, of products go down, or the products get cheapened in terms of each individual product, which is not to say that the aggregate value of product production has to go down, but if the items, individual items go down, and if wages are thought of as nothing more than a subsistence wage, where all they're going to do is provide for the minimum survival and basic conventional needs of the wage earner, then one might think that as other as, as productivity increases and the cost of production per item declines, it's possible to satisfy the basic needs of the individual wage earner with a diminishing salary, diminishing wages, potentially. I mean, one could think of that kind of connection, potentially. 